Yeah. Oh, shit, that's good. And I will ultimately develop hypertension. That's kind of scary. So what again is hypertension? That's not It's high blood pressure. So eventually, almost everyone in this room will develop high blood pressure. Can we control that? Maybe if we really do get under that 1500, maybe we can be that 10%. That'd be kind of cool, right? Okay, the American Journal of Hypertension. They followed uh, participants over 20 years and found that people who ate a high percentage of their daily calories from sodium were 63% more likely to die of heart failure than those who ate a small percentage of sodium. Where is most of the sodium coming from in the American diet? Is it coming from the salt shaker? Processed food. Processed food. Yeah, it's from all that processed food. And ham. Mind your business. Ham. <laughs> um, you know, you got to really kind of listen to your body. I mean, Right in front of my face. I What'd I tell you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, you'd have been really upset if you saw the ham I took off of it, though. Uh -huh. You gotta really listen to your bodies, too. So, I mean, I can really tell if I ate ham, what do I feel like the next morning? I, I, cannot, I cannot put my rings on. Um, I go to wash my face, put makeup on for work. What happens? My eyes are so puffy. Um, how do you feel? You feel chronically thirsty, don't you? You gotta listen to your body. These are just. This is not a good way to feel, right? Um, to feel puffy all the time, right? Judith, I got this over here. Okay, in 2010, um, New York City went on a war against salt. Did anybody read about this? What nope. did New York City do? This was huge. This kind of was um, what I would say, kind of what New York did with the trans fat. What did New York do with trans fat? They banned it. They said anybody in New York City cannot use trans fat. And then what happened? The whole state of California went trans fat free. And it changed the whole way Americans eat food. The processed food, we're not putting it in our foods anymore. Well, hopefully. Um, so now New York in 2010 made a bold effort. And they said over the next five years, all restaurants had to cut their sodium intake, um, sodium in their food by 25%. It's a huge step. Um, how many lives do you think that could save? Do you think in places like New York City, they eat out all the time? Yes, yeah, so this is huge. Frozen meals. I think this is kind of eye-opening right here. One frozen meal has 2,200 milligrams of sodium. So your whole day's budget for sodium is in one frozen meal. What's the problem with one frozen meal? Yeah, you don't get filled up. So does anybody really just eat one frozen meal? And it comes in a box, and then you're eating something else that's probably processed. I mean, if you really aren't cooking, you're doing this, or you're eating two frozen meals, or you're not watching your um, serving sizes, and maybe it's something like Stouffer's, and some of those things have like four servings per box at 2,200 um, milligrams of sodium per pop. You gotta be real careful with anything that, uh, anything that has, has lots of ingredients in there. Be real careful. A National Heart, Lung, and Blood Institute says it has known for at least two decades that salt-induced high blood pressure is a significant contributor to heart disease and stroke the number one and number three causes of death in the U.S. It was found in 2004 that 150,000 lives can be saved um, just by cutting back on the sodium levels in restaurants. How many of you feel pretty terrible after you eat in a restaurant? You gotta really listen to your body. I, I mean, I really, you don't feel the same as you do at home, do you? How do you feel when you get home? Do you feel bloated? What do you think's in that food item that why? It's three weeks old. It's three weeks old. You gotta be careful. The average trip your fruit or vegetable took to the grocery store is fifteen hundred miles. How long does it take to travel fifteen hundred miles? Let's just say I had a ton of money. Two days right now. How long would it take me? At least two days, two days right? So now I'm a poor banana in South America and I don't have a whole lot of funds to get to the United States. How long will it take me to get here? Yeah, maybe like three weeks? When does a fruit or vegetable re reach its peak of ripeness? Like, oh, see, yeah, but that's what he looked like. Gross. Is it a prune? When does that banana, when would he reach his peak of nutrition? When he's actually yellow, right? And that is supposed to happen on the vine, right? To reach all of its nutrition. What's the problem? They do it before they get off the vine. Green. How are they making it turn yellow? They're gassing it. You've got to be real careful. Every day something is off the vine, it's losing its nutrition. 
buying locally ensures that they're picking it at their peak of ripeness and how long until from the date it's picked to it's ending up in your house. A couple Less days. Than 48 hours usually. Definitely worth it. And you can usually save yourself a ton of money. If you were going to buy canned, I only really recommend maybe canned beans if that's the route you have to go. You have to rinse them and you'll save 60, rinse 60 percent out of the sodium off yours. Frozen is great, affordable, because they pick at the peak of ripeness and they flash freeze it right off the vine. Right there. Okay. You're kind of overweight because the clothes you're wearing and you know, it's like you have an idea, but when you look back, that's why I hope everyone has before pictures. Because when you're done this program and when you're continuing with your, um, your, your fitness programs, whatever you're gonna do, you'll wanna look back because you just will be so amazed as to how far you've come. And so um, this is the first team that I was on. We did um, in, in September. And um, these are some of the other teams that I've helped mentor. And um, and then this is my before and after. I've, I've lost 80 pounds. And, it, and it's been hard. It's been, I've kind of pecked away the pounds a little at a time. But I've learned to get into the, the right mindset about it because I'm not one of those individuals who will, you know, four or five pounds a week, just, just knock it off in no time at all. It takes me a really long time, so I had to be very patient. And I don't know if, you know, there's a lot of you here in, in the room that have kind of done that through the program. <laughs> Zorkin, Artesta, Pop, 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 the goal. Really? This, this, this one, do do. Gotcha. All right. Um, top ten teams. We have in eleventh place. Mom plays in dermatology. In 10th place, we have Center for Therapeutic Massage. In 9th place, Culinary Institute. In 8th place, Dirty Bands. 7th place, Mosque Construction. 6th place, Wycliffe Triangle. 5th place, CCPRC. 4th place, Colonial Chemicals. 3rd place, Lucy Mortgage. 2nd place, Rebel Dogs. And 1st place, Dr. Spa. I did HTC uh, I start September 6th. Um, I've lost 33 pounds. Woo! You're leaving me? I did HTC for a multitude of reasons. Oh, Vanity no. and clothes shopping, yeah. big ones. Um, but all joking aside, I did HTC. I've had three back surgeries, and the prognosis for my back is um, for pain is not good. Um, so the treatment is a stronger core and less weight to carry around. But the main reason, you want to flip to mine, there's my after. <laughs> the main reason I the main reason I did HCC is these two. Um, I'm an older mom, I'm 42. Flynn was born, Flynn is one, Wit is four. Flynn was born just before I turned 42 years old. And I really want to be around to see them. I want to see them get married. I want to see them graduate. I want to see how they turn out. Um, and I discovered that the best thing I could do towards that goal is to be healthy. Um, exercise and eating is, and healthy eating is the fountain of youth. I mean, you guys have seen Janice, seen Lily. There's a something to that. Um, plus, you really need a lot of energy to keep up with these two. Um, this cycle of HCC, I'm a mentor for the River Dogs team. I'm back with Katie Sinclair. And tonight I want to talk to you about being fearless in your kitchen and making food that tastes good. Um, no one who knows me would ever believe if I told you that I'm kind of a fearful person. 
I'm terrified of making a fool of myself. My first Thursday night here, I got here an hour early and I sat in my car trying not to barf. I was terrified. <laughs> um, doing this, speaking to you guys, I, I wanted to do it because I'm that terrified of doing it. But part of my ACGC journey has been about doing the things that I'm afraid of. I tell my son the only time that you can be brave is when you're scared. Uh, but there is a place that I'm fearless, and that is my kitchen. I have never met an ingredient I was afraid to try. And you guys can all be fearless too. Through, and one way you can do it is through the use of herbs and spices. Um, trying new things and exploring different ingredients. Who, there, who here has been eating the same thing over and over and over again? Who of you feel like, if I have to eat one more salad, one more boneless, skinless, baked chicken breast, I just might go crazy? Yeah? Um, I, I have a little anecdote I wanted to share. It's quick. I know you guys are ready to get out of here. I have a friend who struggled with her weight her entire life. She grew up eating good old fried southern food. She didn't know how to cook anything else, and when she decided it was time to do something about her weight and her health, she changed the way she cooked. She invited me over for dinner one night. We ate plain, boiled chicken breast with no seasoning and plain zucchini and squash steamed. Nothing on it. Nobody should have to eat like that. <laughs> Who can guess how long her cooking changes lasted? One week. Not, not long at all. Um, she, it didn't last. She continued to struggle for another 15 years. But she figured it out. She also added an exercise, always key to. But she also learned to cook healthy food that tastes good. She's lost almost 100 pounds. Woo! Healthy food can and should taste good. I have no formal training in the kitchen. I've worked in restaurants before, but I don't count schlepping fried seafood in Merle's Inlet as <laughs> kitchen experience, and I don't count frying gloomy onions as kitchen experience. <laughs> What I do have is an instinctive gift for cooking. I had trouble figuring out what to say to you tonight because it's something I just do automatically. But hopefully I can share some things that help you in your kitchen. I figure if I can get healthy, delicious dinner on the table for me, my husband, my mom, hi mom, um, a four-year-old and a one-year-old, you guys can do it too. On your tables, everyone's got a little jar. They, they're looking a little sad and when be careful, they're in water. But um, if you want to go to the next slide, Every, there's four herbs in there. They're color coded. If uh, you want to pull out, pull them out, there's one with a little yellow thread on that. I take these herbs for granted. I use them all the time, but I thought maybe you guys would like to check some of these herbs out. Um, the one with the yellow thread is thyme. Give it a sniff, pinch some of it between your fingers, see what it smells like. Um, thyme is so versatile. It, it, I keep a pot of lemon thyme on my front porch. I just wanted to give you a couple things that you oh, can you're do to be these in herbs. Um, you can simmer whole fruits of thyme in olive oil and chopped garlic to just drizzle over your whole wheat pasta. You can use it, you can use that oil to make popcorn too. You can tie sprigs of thyme together with this cooking twine, if you don't have cooking twine, use some unwaxed dental floss. And you can throw that in a pot of soup to add flavor. And then everyone talks about wine pairing. What right in rice dishes and on roasted vegetables. The next one is uh, rosemary, and that's the one with the red thread. And it's a very, it has a very strong aroma, and it has a really piney flavor. You can strip the leaves off of a strong, rosemary stem and use it as a skewer to make a kebab. Uh, you can mix dried rosemary with garlic, salt, and black.